All right. Damien, we're back at it. We're back at it. It's been a while. Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so today we wanted to talk about this idea of over-identification over with the profile or, you know, specifically with the type. It could be any elements of the profile and we can go, you know, more into that later on. But the first big thing I think is, is the type itself and the importance of making the difference between, you know, I am a projector, in your case, I am a manifester versus I have a projector aura, I have a manifesto aura, and these are just mechanics. And maybe I'll speak a little bit about how that, that came to me in the first place. Um, it was actually recently, um, I was doing some plant medicine and I wanted to to check a bit, a few things from, from that state, you know, and, and while being expanded and, and, you know, just kind of checking a few things to make sure that nothing is, is too out of alignment. Um, checking the gene keys, okay, green light, all good. And then human design, eh, orange light. Okay, what's that? And it was telling me, like, just, it's all good. It's all fine. You can absolutely use it. It's valid. But remember, it's just mechanics. Mm -hmm. it, it really showed me how it's just the surface. It's just how things are meant to intertwine and click with each other. And that's what aura type is. That's what strategy is. It's just the surface layer where, like, the, how things come together. And if they come together correctly, then you can do... You know, and then you can start maybe starting a relationship, starting a business together, any decisions that you make. Mm. And so it's all about that, you know, about the surface mechanics, but it's not who we are. So as a projector and in theory, we know it, but it kind of it landed in a deeper way. And I see also in myself and in others, the traps of over identifying with the type or any aspect of the profile and constantly saying, I'm a projector, I'm a projector, I'm a projector. Well, that means, you know, oh, I don't have energy. I don't have that, 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 Like it can also mean some good things, but when you identify with it, it's kind of diminishing also maybe certain aspects of, of yourself, certain other aspects of your profile. Uh, just even your own soul and spirit, you know, where there is a lot of vitality and resourcefulness and, and, and inspiration and, and, and desire to, you know, perhaps initiate certain things or, um, and so, yeah, I think that's going to be the, you know, what we can talk about today, how, and I'm curious, first of all, to hear also maybe your journey and your story with that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. The first thing that comes up for me as you were sharing there is like, I, I, I just always love putting things in, in a developmental context and maybe I can like deviate and give some other examples to come back and kind of mm -hmm. illustrate this point, you know, and I think about, um, there, there are certain stages of development where we start to become more aware of the constructed nature of reality. And one of the big debates out in the public forums is the, for example, the debate around gender, the constructed nature of gender, you know, gender being masculine and feminine rather than biological male or female. So gender being kind of a set of qualities or tendencies that we exhibit for whatever purpose, right? And um, and I think that until a certain point in our own development, we are identified with kind of maleness or femaleness. We are identified with masculine or feminine. And I'm just using this to illustrate an example because I want to bring it back to this. And then we get to this point where we start disidentifying. And one of the biggest problems I see in the world is the way that we disidentifying is 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 probably not quite correct. And I think this is an important nuance to discuss here. There's often a disidentification that becomes a deconstruction, right? There is no such thing as gender. Well, that's not, that doesn't really, that's not really, doesn't really hold true. There are absolutely qualities that tend to be associated with masculine or feminine expressions, right? And so I find when we move towards a more integrated or more an integral kind of level of consciousness, um, that we we then move towards my my camera's gone to sleep it should come back in just a second yeah it, there we it go first, okay back yeah um 
when we move to a more kind of integrated perspective, we recognize that, for example, gender is, is a construct, but that doesn't make it not real. So I can use masculine kind of ways of being to, for example, generate energy in my relationship. This is the way that I view polarity. And so I'm bringing kind of some of my frames into this and then we'll, um, so for example, when I act in a masculine way and my partner acts in a feminine way, what happens is we generate erotic chemistry, right? I get turned on by her femininity. She gets turned on by my masculinity. So we use these constructs, these, these things that we can, I, it's almost like clothes or items of clothing that we can put on and then enact interact with the world with and then kind of take off and i think the same thing um sits here is that there is like you know like something i think about with the design as well it's like we we all have all the centers we all have all the gates they're just defined or not defined meaning it's almost like our dna you know i have the dna for brown mm-hmm. eyes but actually i have the dormant dna for every color eye expression there is really so i have the mm-hmm. the potential for all of it um but there's just there's just tendencies. And so I think of like, um, you know, and same with the energy centers, right? It's like just because I don't have a sacral doesn't mean that I don't have sacral energy. It's just inconsistent. You know, there's just an inconsistent relationship to it. And even the phrasing, I don't have a sacral, is yeah. can also lead to certain beliefs. And, and you know, it's even like the, the phrase itself is not even correct if we, if we want to use it. Yeah, absolutely. It's like the, the correct phrase is, my sacral is undefined. Yeah. Which means mm-hmm. there's an inconsistent relationship to the qualities of the sacral energy in my being. Doesn't mean I can't use them though. Doesn't mean I can't chill out with my 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 partner who's a generator and kind of like ride her sacral. Doesn't mean I won't even have sacral energy sometimes as well. Like it's just, you know, and so so I think of I think of it like that. And you know, and I love the idea of so so when we do that and you know, I love the the kind of the mechanics of it. Like human design is a mechanic structure. It's like the function of my body. You know, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. I just, I'm just learning to use this thing, you know, and we all, we reach a point where we go, I'm not my body. I have a body. I'm not my emotions. I have emotions. I'm not my thoughts. I have thoughts. But until we reach that developmental stage, I am my thoughts, you know, an early child, a baby is that they're identified with their emotional expression. So I think that that kind of happens in our human design journey too. And I have more to say, but I might just pause, pause there. Yeah, I think it's super relevant and, uh, and insightful. And it's part also of, like, I see the journey in human design of, you know, at first you're not aware of this knowledge and then you start discovering your profile and yeah. maybe it takes a while to even accept this information and to start seeing it. But then the next stage after that is just complete identification with it and can really become like, and that's also a tendency that we, we all have, you know, when, when we enter this new field or this new system, this new school, whatever, we just take on the identity and, 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 you know, we build our sense of self with, with that specific thing. Mm. Uh, and with human design, you know, I, I like, I mean, I was talking to a friend and he was like, you know, since I know that I'm a projector, I'm more tired all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's a problem. You know, yeah. we don't want that. Like ideally the knowledge of you knowing that you're a projector should lead to more vitality because you know how to manage your energy. So like yeah. you were saying, like, I am not the body, but, you know, you're in a male body. I'm in a male body. Therefore, some masculine attributes might be easier maybe to, 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 to and, embody, you know. And if I, if I feed my body with foods that enhance the testosterone production of my body, my body gets stronger. It has more energy. It has more vitality. If I feed my body with foods that increase estrogen, my body will get more apathetic. I will get more lazy. I will start to manifest chronic illnesses. So there are things that my body needs, but I'm also not my body. Yes, exactly. And so to hold those two things, because I think maybe some people might get a bit reactive and be like, no, no, but I am, I am my type. I'm like, yeah. No, but we're, we're not saying it doesn't exist. We're not saying it's not real. We're not saying the theory is invalid uh, and its applications. It's just don't identify with it because then you're, you're collapsing everything that you are, all the nuances of who you are. And, and I don't even mean just the profile. I mean, beyond the profile, like who are you beyond that, you know? Yeah. And 
and everything else. And you're just collapsing it into this one thing. And you're trying to make it fit into this box of, oh, this is me. And it has just a lot of pitfalls, you know, and, and like, like we were saying, just the energy piece, like we're both you and I, you know, you're a manifester, I'm a projector, which means that we have undefined cycles. It doesn't mean we don't have cycles. It doesn't mean we don't have sacral energy or that we don't have access to sacral energy. It means that it's unreliable, unstable, unpredictable. We're, and there are a bunch of things that I can do as a projector to manage my energy so that I will have actually more sacral energy on a day-to-day -day basis. There are things that can be done to manage energy. And actually, as non sacrals we're here to master energy. That's mm -hmm. the other piece as well. And that's, you know, another tangent that we can go into maybe a bit later. But yeah, having that distance, I think, is very important as well. And maybe actually very freeing for people who maybe from the beginning feel a bit limited by the whole system in the first place. Yeah. And, and I love the nuance as well, because I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, it's like, if we look at my design and separate the conscious and unconscious parts in the personality, I'm a mental projector projector in the design. I'm a reflector, right? Okay. There's one interesting thing. That's a bit more nuanced. I have two projected channels. Oh, okay. They need invitation, right? I have one manifested channel. That's the part that manifests, right? Okay. Then there's the transits that occur. Sometimes the transit is lighting up my sacral. Okay. That's interesting. What am I at that point? I'm a manifester with a repelling aura, but I'm a four one. So I'm friendly, right? How does that influence it? So there's all of these, these bits that make us up and, and really we're, we're unique, you know? And so the manifester is like just part of it, or the, the aura type is just part of kind of our makeup. You know, for example, I have long arms, right? You know, I have long arms. I have an initiating aura. Okay, that's a certain feature or advantage that I have. You know, I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a tall body, which would allow me to play better basketball, you know, than some people who are short, for example. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily my defining factor or feature. And really, all you're saying is that, or let's say, what makes you a manifester is that you have one manifesting channel. Just one. Out of three channels, one of them is a manifesting channel. Two of them are projected channels. And so, and you can only use that. And, and the reason why you have a manifesto aura coming from this channel is because that's what a channel does. Yeah. When you have two gates that connect, it creates this field. And, and really, it creates the aura yeah. of the person. Yeah. And sometimes someone can have seven different channels. And so they have a pretty complex and, and sometimes confusing aura and energy to them and a lot of different things that can come out. And yeah. sometimes someone has one channel and their aura is just super simple and, and just one dimensional, yeah. you know, and then there's still the gates and all of that, but the, 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 the energetical field, which is created by the channels and the, and the two centers is going to be pretty simple. And so you have access to this you know to the manifesto qualities because of that one channel and it doesn't even mean that you can use the same qualities for your other two channels for those right. you need to wait for the invitation you need to be recognized you need to and i think that's it's super important and i i was reading um some blog posts from one of the very 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 early students of raw like way 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 back and at the time, there was no teachings on types. There was only teachings about gates and channels, mm. which means that we, at the time, they only talked about projected channels, manifesting manifest channels, generated channels, and then the manifesting generated channel. There was that was the only conversation. It was the body, the pure thing of the body graph with the channels and the centers and the gates. There was no no teachings or conversations even about I am the specific type, I am that, and and then mm. the division that 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 came later on. And I'm not saying that he made it up. I'm just saying that at the the foundation of it is actually just the get centers, gates, channels, and the different mm. qualities of those channels. I love that, and I and I definitely have noticed that, um, the love that I have for the manifesto channel. And and as you speak that, I realize that, oh, that's the part of me that I recognize as the manifesto, right? It's the 2145. You know, I'm I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get some tattoos of the hexagrams of those because I really love that channel. 
but I feel it as a set of it's like an attributes that I have. It's something that I have access to. It's like a little skill set that I particularly have. And I'm like, oh, I, I'm learning how to use this this innate or natural tendency that I have to beneficial effect. And my partner kind of really enjoys the channel. She really enjoys is the 63, which creates her as a generator, right? It's like her main functional generator channel. So it's like, yeah, these are just defining or strong channels, but they're not necessarily uh, identities, you know, and that's kind of the premise of, of what you're saying here of the, mm. the, I think, and I think really the only danger with identification is the rigidity or the dogma. And I, you know, I've had many conversations with my partner where there's resistance to the idea that all she has to do is wait to respond, you know, cause she does initiate sometimes in different and interesting ways. She's a three, six, she has the three sixty, which is an individual mutative channel. It's right. It, it kind of, impacts through being itself through doing what it wants to do other people like look at it like it's almost like the fish at the front of the school of fish that changes direction and then all the fish change direction right you know and so there's like there's just so much more nuance to all of it and yeah and i have a part of me that loves to penetrate deeply into things right it's okay i have these projected parts of me as well i have a line one it's like you know and i just like i think i love human design the most for the opportunity it has to learn about ourselves. But I, and this is, this is the people that I've seen resist something like human design is usually two reasons. There's one of two reasons why people don't like this kind of system. The first is because there's no way you can know who you are. It's funny the thumbs up whenever you do that. I keep like, I keep using European, you know, numbers, one, two, three, one with the thumb, um, uh -huh. German. So it's either that you, you, they, they believe that you can't be like when you're born doesn't have any, you can personality doesn't get shaped by when you're born. And that's a different discussion. And the second one is the resistance to being put in a box. Like I don't want to be put in a box and that's a fair valid reason because, you know, and, and what's going to happen is a lot of people will fall into one of two camps. One camp is like, I'm a hell no to that because I don't want to be put in a box and I don't like any limits. I don't even want to learn about it because learning about it is going to feel constricting and confining because now I'm going to have to learn that I'm a generator or a manifester. And that means I'm confined to, especially if I'm a generator, which is like the most common one. So that means I'm just common and simple and I don't want to know anything about that. Right. Or the other side is like, okay, I learn about my type and now I'm just like, I'm a, I'm a generator. So I just have to sit here and wait to respond, you know, and in my relationship, I won't do anything. And I'm going to sit on the couch until my partner says, what do you want to do? And then I'll respond to it. Right. So it's like, um, and neither of those things are really what I see the benefit of the system is I actually find liberation through understanding. It's simply a map that allows me to understand more about myself by studying it. You know, it's just a map of, of, the structure of human energy in a way, basically mm -hmm. human energy and qualities rather than even personality. It's like human energies and qualities. Um, and by learning those, those things, those identifiers, it's like, I get to like carve away years and years and years of learning. It might take to actually learn these things about me and go, okay, I can read about it. And now I can take it on and reflect on it and go, how is that true for me? How does that show up in my life? How am I expressing that? as as part of who I am. Yeah. And you know, this whole thing of like, I don't want to be put in the box. I mean, you were put in the box the moment you were born. Like <laughs> you're in this, <clears throat> yeah, this box, <laughs> you're an Im immortal infinite spirit born into flesh. Yeah. You know, like you, you are already in a physical box if you want to put it that way. So, and it comes also with an energetic body to it. And it comes with an emotional body and a mental body. And it has all those different layers. So might as well understand the mechanics yeah. of all of it and 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 how it all works. You know, it's and and still that's why I encourage people like all of this stuff, balance it out with a practice that's actually completely removed from all of it and tapping into, you know, a sense of self which is not bound by all of those parameters. So you can actually have, you know, the real I, you have an awareness of that, and then you can just look at all of it. And this is just the experience you're having in this life. Mm. Yeah. It's like, it's like freedom from the box becomes like, comes from being aware of the box, 
you know, and it's almost like, so, and, and, you know, like the, the, the develop, the, the spiritual developmental path is really about just becoming aware of bigger and bigger and bigger boxes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, Gurdjieff said like to get out of jail, you first need to wake up to the fact that you are in jail, yeah. you know, and, and like you said, there's more and more and more layers to it. And I wrote a post a while back on the different stages of deconditioning, mm. you know, in, in those systems, because deconditioning is something that's talked about a lot and usually in a very one dimensional way. Um, you know, the first stage is someone comes and they're fully conditioned by society, by their, you know, families, by whoever they hang out with, like they're just this whole mix and they have no clue of who they are, you know, and maybe they're just like a pure product of the collective. Um, and they're not really living as themselves and what feels good and authentic. Mm. And then they come, you know, in contact with those systems as take human design and they discover their body graph and they discover their type and authority and all of that. And then they start going on a journey of, okay, oh, okay this is, this is me, or this is, this is my configuration, let's say. And, and, and I'm going to now you know, be loyal to myself and I'm going to follow those ways and I'm I'm not going to do all the other stuff and I'm going to go into this process of deconditioning and getting rid of everything that is not me. That's the first layer of like, you discovered the box that you were in, you discovered all of those things that were not you and you're just cleaning it, cleaning it, cleaning it, cleaning it. And at mm -hmm. some point you arrive to this sense of, you know, real individuation, like, okay, this is me. But that's not the end of it. You also wake up to the fact that maybe you've over-identified with the sense of me and you've over-identified with the qualities of your profile and the parameters of it and the mechanics, which is the topic of today's conversation. And then you're like, huh, maybe I'm going to also start, you know, or maybe, okay, first stage before that, I need to add one, one more step. You realize that being you is not a doesn't only have one layer to it it's not one dimensional being you has an evolution built inside of it and that's where the teachings of the gene keys come in you know mm. first human design gives you like you know this is how you work and then mm. the gene key is like hey you know that with this configuration there's actually a map of evolution you mm. can like you don't have to stay down and you know in and you don't have to use the, your profile as an excuse because at that level a typical thing will be like, oh, of course I'm like this because I'm this and this and that. And it's just an excuse for all the shadows. Mm. And there's no desire to do any work on oneself. And there's no desire for evolution because it's very convenient. It's all explained, you know, by by the profile. And then the gene keys come in. It's like, no, there is a map of evolution. There's a map of, you know, and, and it's very aligned with integral as well and the different stages of integral. Like the, the gene keys map of shadow gift and city is just a simplified version of the nine stages in, in integral, you know, there's a, there's a direct connection mm. and like, Oh no, there's actually evolution. There is growth. And then you start going on this journey, but you're still in your own themes. You're still mm. looking at yourself at whatever is activated in your own DNA, whatever gene keys you have, whatever gates you have. Um, and then it's like, Hmm, that there's another box. I'm I'm just I'm just stuck in that one configuration. Maybe I should start learning from others as well. Like I'm a four six. Maybe I have something to learn, you know, from a one three. Maybe mm. I have something to learn from a five one, from all those other lines that I don't have. Mm. And maybe I need to start integrating those qualities inside of myself to be a more complete being. Mm. I don't really agree with this thing of like, oh, I'm a four, six, therefore all other lines are irrelevant to me. No, there, there's very important keys and there's very important wisdom in all of the other lines and, and they're meant to be integrated. It doesn't when, mean that, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, and, and also we have lines, different lines all throughout our profile. There's probably yes. very few people who don't have at least one of every line in their profile. Yes. So we have those aspects. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing that I really love is that the profiles are, de are designed by the grand, you know, cosmic creator to relate to each other in an evolutionary unfolding. You know, I can feel mm -hmm. it. There's like a stream of mutation that is passed from profile to profile. There's 12 profiles and they run in, an, in a sequence and they're actually passing a mutationary, like a mutation between them. 
you know, and if that mutation takes hold and is moved from profile to profile, it becomes the next evolutionary step of humanity. And this is ongoing yes. constantly and we're all participating in it. Yes. And so there's this idea of it doesn't matter which line you are, because it's not like you get to the sixth line and that's the end of the journey. After the six, you're back to one. Yeah. And it's just it's a spiral and you keep and, and you keep on, you know, same, same, but different. It's you're going in in, in, in those loops, but there's evolution in them. And it means that we're meant to integrate all the previous stages. So it doesn't matter which line you are. If you go back far enough, all the lines are included in there, mm. you know? And so again, taking it from integral, transcend and include, transcend and include. And so you need to include and integrate all those previous stages. And that's mm. already, you know, someone who would start having this integral view on the systems. You know, and then you understand that you actually need to integrate and include all other qualities. Like, like you were saying, we actually, like, if we take the 64 gene keys, we have all of those inside of us. It's not like, because I don't know, I don't have the 21 defined in my chart that the theme of the 21 is not present in my life and that I don't need to deeply explore this. And if anything, what we know from openness, from the white in our profiles, that those are meant to become areas of learning and eventually mastery over time. So we should very, very much focus on those. And so there's this process like, oh, okay, I can actually start. Now I know who I am. I've done the work. I'm not just bathing in my shadows all the time. And I can start looking outside and I can start integrating more and more and more and include more and more and more in, in what I call me. Mm. And then the final stage is you don't need the systems anymore. The systems self-destruct. Mm. They just collapse on their own. And then you can just be, you can just live without any need for reference and 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 for numbers and all of that. And and Richard Rudd talks about this in the jinkies. It's like, the, the, the jinkies are designed to self-destruct when mm. the time is right. You know, mm. the whole thing just in your own awareness, I mean, just vanishes and then you can just be and there's no more need. But you cannot, you cannot skip stages. You cannot go from like a fully conditioned being, you know, not knowing who you are and just being this, you know, collective construct and just being programmed by society to just pure being and and you know being not only fully you know uh, uh being fully yourself and on top of it integrating everything else and just you know being this naturalness like it's 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 natural stages of of development that lead there yeah it's just like that spectrum of of competence from unconscious incompetence all the way up to unconscious competence there's a point where we no longer have to put attention on it we've we've mastered kind of the the aspects of our profile that are given to us we've mastered the aspects of our profile that are not and we're in an unconscious state of competence meaning that we're like in elegance where we're flowing more mm -hmm. and more naturally we don't have to we're not we're not trying to figure out how to make ourselves more efficient we've become efficient mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yes. And, and there are, you know, it's not like those systems are the only way to get there. Like that's mm. another piece on the whole deconditioning thing. Like how many years have you been in your experiment? I can tell you, I, I've seen people who've been into human design and the experiment for the last 20 years, and they're just fully conditioned by human design and by Ra and just repeat, just parrots. I don't feel any of their own identity. I don't feel any of their own contribution. I don't feel the embodiment. I don't feel any of it. It's just, and they they deal with the system. They're telling you to be in the body, but meanwhile, it's coming from their mind. And they themselves have zero embodiment. It's all just a mental thing. Yeah. And maybe someone who's been doing for the last five, 10 years, a lot of meditation, a lot of embodied practices, a lot of relational practices, a lot of... And maybe their way, like their deconditioning process is far like superior and they're much, much, much further in that process than someone who might have been using the system mentally for the last 20 years. So it's also, you know, this whole thing of like, yeah, it takes seven years, take seven years if you really do the thing, you yeah. know, but there's many, many ways of, of, uh, of cheating yourself. Climbing the mountain. And then, you know, and, and then I also want to speak to like, the other side of this of like, you know, so yes, 
we're not our identity. You know, I am, I am not a manifester. I have a manifesto aura. And at the same time, I love it. I love my mm -hmm. manifest aura. I love my manifestness, you know, the, the aspects of me that that is who I am, you know, and I love it. And the more that I learn about it and the more I learn and understand my tendencies, the more I love it, you know? And so, um, yes, I just think about that too. So it's like that it's, it's, it's kind of a tricky concept to talk about sometimes because it's like, don't identify with it, but actually still, it's still you, but it's not all of you. You know, it's you, mm -hmm. but it's not all of you. It's you, but it's not you, right? It's like, it's not who you actually are, but it's you in the same way that my hand is not who I am. My hand is not me, but it's also part of me. It has me in it. You know, it's the same kind of thing. So there's like, there's a deep love that we can have for our design, you know, for who, for who yeah. we are, our aura. I think that some distance with it can actually help with that with that love yeah. you know because what i notice also if, if people come with a deep like lack of self-worth and self-love to start with you know and usually a lot of negative mental and emotional patterns that come with that as a consequence of that usually are the type of people who would tell me like oh my profile is the worst mm. you know mm. so bad like why do i have the worst like well, I, I don't think you have, the, there's no such thing as the worst profile. I think you're just focusing on all of the shadows or downsides or challenges of your profile and completely bypassing all the good things about it. And, yeah. you know, so it, it has nothing to do with the profile. That's just how you feel about yourself, you yeah. know? And so, well, there's a whole work to do on yourself and that's another thing, but at least with a little bit of distance from the profile, you can actually start loving those qualities. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, for anyone listening, this is something uh, we'll be touching a, a, upon in the upcoming project program that I'm running. It's starting on, on January 21st. And this is something that's, you know, I, I see as a big uh, pitfall for being a projector is over identification with the projector nest. Uh, mm. And so that's definitely something that is going to be uh, included in there. I'll put a link below if you want all the information about the program. And then Damien, you have also uh, your membership going, maybe something else coming up. Uh, just let us know. And I'll also put a, a link below. Um, yeah, you can put a link to my website below, but I don't, I don't feel the need to talk about it that much right now. I'm more curious about your way of the projector program. And I, I find myself curious about like, how to how, like the the concepts that we're discussing and a program focused for those with a projector aura type and how do you reconcile the two for you well exactly what we're just saying like holding this dichotomy of like and and everything is also always going to come in this duality like mm. hey you're not that and this is very real and you actually really need to look there because it's, it's going to yeah. help you being yourself more yeah. and being more free and having more energy and so on and so on. So I think today's conversation is more of a premise for whoever is coming to the program. Like, mm. hey, we're going to go deep into this projector thing and please don't over-identify with it either. Mm. Yes. And so, you know, in, in the program, the way it's divided, it's, it's in four uh, different um modules let's say and the first one is really about the basic mechanics and purpose of being a projector mm. you know like putting things into into perspective and, and giving some context to the whole projector thing and so that's really maybe most of the theory that you might find out there and, and the, what's usually talked about for the projector um then there's going to be a big module on health you know and napping. all the different aspects the art of napping <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and every projector that I've ever done a reading for or spoken to, when I tell them about napping, they're like, oh my God, I love napping. And then I'm like, yeah, you should have mm -hmm. more naps. And then like, really? I can? I'm like, yeah, nap more. Mm -hmm. Like it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm I'm not even that big of a napper. Like I, I make myself do it just to have like, and usually my naps are like a 10 minute power nap. I barely fall asleep and just wake up, mm -hmm. uh, but still it's, it's helpful. And Really, the goal of the program is not to be too heavy on the theory, uh, but it's mm. mostly the reason 
again, because uh, I have a projector aura and, and I have years of experience dealing with it, like I wanted to share all the experiences and practical things that I found along the way. Mm -hmm. So in there, there will be health advice that might be valid for other types as well, but it's all catered toward the projector experience, mm -hmm. you know? So it's really uh, everything that you might be doing that can help in that. And so, yes, we'll be touching on, you know, the quality of your energy, the quantity of the energy and how to build more energy inside of yourself, recovery and rest and napping, of course, and, you know, and also obvious things like diet and lifestyle and all those kinds of things, you know, but again, just bringing it back to the projector thing. Mm -hmm. And then the last two modules are going to be relational. Mm -hmm. So relationships for projector and, and connecting back to the mechanics of the projector, of course, and the purpose of the projector, which comes, you know, very handy in, in actual, you know, the projector is here to relate to the other, mm -hmm. you know, like, as as projectors, we're all about the other. We're here. We're not here to focus on ourselves all the time. We're here to focus on the other. So, mm. if we're not good in relationships, it's gonna be we're gonna face big problems as projectors. So mm. there's a whole piece on that. And then lastly, about success and prosperity as a projector, you know, and and what really success means, and and you know, along the some some business tips or some things that maybe some people are still, you know, stuck in a nine to five that they want to leave and, 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 you know, also offering some, some help on that. So nice. yeah, that's going to be like touching on all the pillars of the, of the projector life. Beautiful. I love it. I love having projectors in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Great. Yeah. If thank I was you, a projector, I, missed, I missed the conversations. Yeah, me too. If I was a projector, this is where I'd be going. And I and I do think that there is, if I was a projector, again, we fall back into this identity language. Um, but I do really think that there is a lot of validity in learning from those who have the same aura as us. I find myself, for example, in business yes. and marketing. And 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 again, for like for like what are we what are we attempting to do? So 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 the main kind of person that I model a lot of my business stuff on is a manifester you know, has a manifest aura and I watch the way he operates and I'm like, okay, that's very interesting. And I, I really like to listen to him because I can see the validity in that versus different aura types in the way they work. But mm -hmm. when I'm looking for a mentor and I found a business mentor that I want to work with, he's a mental projector, right? Because I actually want someone to look into me and my business and find all the things that aren't working. Right, I'm not trying to model it on him. I want someone to have a look and see what what am I missing? What are the blind spots that I have here? Um, so I just think that that's also you know really interesting in how we how we kind of play to our strengths and skills and where do where do we look for advice and inspiration and support? Yeah. You know, based on understanding of design. Yeah, you're pointing to something very important, which is the difference between transmission and advice. Yeah. You know, yeah. transmission and guidance. It's not the same yeah. thing, you know, yeah. and, and and you're right. We need an energetical transmission from the same aura type. Yeah. You know, yeah. We need to Absolutely. get a feeling of what that's like. You know, what? how does it feel to be near a successful projector? Yeah, I How love I love feel? I love knowing who all the manifestors are out there. You know, I've tracked most mm -hmm. of the Hollywood manifestors now, so I can watch them. Right, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let's do this again, man. I missed it. Absolutely, lovely to talk with you. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thanks.